What's going on guys? It's 304 Tech here and my Creality What's going on guys? It's 304 Tech Beaman here and today we're going to shoot a quick video on an unboxing of the Creality CR10 S4. Kind of my first thoughts and how my first print went and maybe some things to keep in mind before you buy it. So let's get right into it. Alright guys, so here we are. Box is taken off. Top is uh, open and uh, we'll just go ahead and remove this. Right away, you can see everything's nice and cleanly packaged. I did get this from Tiny Machines first, uh, from Chris and the guys over there. Their uh, website link will be below, and they're definitely good guys over there. They made sure to get it to me over here before Christmas. Wow, I'm super excited. I've been waiting for this thing, and I am super pumped. Um, right away, you can see that this is one of the first uh, versions that's a super, uh, which is pretty cool. I didn't know that that was going to happen. Um, but this is pretty much the boxing setup. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this top stuff real quick. All right guys, so the wrapping is off. And just look at the size of this. Look at this, this thing's, look, my, my, my Prusa is right over here. I want you to just, look at this comparison. Now don't get me wrong, Prusa's a great printer. I love Prusa, I, lo I have the multicolor setup. Love everything about Prusa. So Prusa, all, you know, Prusa's great, okay? No questions there, but in terms of the amount of things that you can do with a print bread this size, 16 inches cubed, phenomenal, unbelievable. All right, I'm gonna get this beast out and we'll continue. All right, guys, I just wanted you to see a comparison of my hand. Yeah, I'm a pretty big guy. I got big hands. That is on the CR-10 S4, okay, and this, is on the Prusa Mark II. Huge difference, just so you guys can see, you know, with the comparison, how much of a difference there is there. All right, guys, so I just took uh, took the first layer off. This is everything underneath. I opened up that box. This is all the stuff. I got some extras because I ordered it on Black Friday. Uh, so I got a few little extras there for free. And then this is a super, so this has the filament sensor and some, dip, some new Marlin firmware on it. I'm pretty sure is the difference there. Pretty pumped about that. Um, as you can see right here, is the uh, there's the filament head, and um, then you have your you know your controller box with everything. This is just something else I wanted to show you guys. Uh, I'm not sure if they do this when it comes directly from Gearbest or something like that, but when you get it from you know Tiny Machines, it's awesome. I mean, let me zoom in a little here. You can see all the different you know they're checking everything, which is awesome. That's what we want. Uh, so theoretically, as long as you know, everything was good when they checked it. Everything should be great when I assemble it. I do wish that uh, maybe they, they had a little gummy treat in this like the Prusa does, but overall, great stuff. All right, guys, so now that the unboxing's done, I just wanted to really talk about kind of my first thoughts when I was building it, some build tips, um, you know, some issues I did run into, and then finally the first print and how it turned out. So first for build tips, the build is pretty simple. If you check out the links below, I'm gonna have a link to a video by Uncle Jesse who he did a build on this, and then also to the Tiny Machines website which has the details for the S4 build. Uh, between the two of them, if you have any questions, I'm sure you, could, you definitely will be able to find your answer there. The only tips that I really have for you is when you go to assemble the two axes, so when you're putting the Z axis you know, perpendicular to the axis with the print bed on it, you wanna lift the, uh, the axis up the bottom one up off of the table right every building on on some like shoe boxes or something what this allows you to do is when you put the z axis down on it allows you to easily get your hands underneath to get the screws in because the screws all go in from the bottom there's two on each side um, one other quick tip is when you're putting those screws in do for instance like one on one side one on the other side and then back and forth until you have all four in because if you do two at one side at a time then it'll over tighten the one side and it's going to be hard to line up the other side so just keep that in mind when you're building it. Other than that, guys, that's pretty much it for tip. If you have any questions on assembling it or anything like that, please feel free to comment below. Definitely help you guys out with that. But it's pretty straightforward, and if it's your first 3D printer, don't be too worried. Uh, it, it's really straightforward, so you should be great. So the next thing I wanna talk about is really just some cool features and then some downsides to the to things that I ran into. Not really downsides to the printer, but just some issues I ran into up front. In terms of cool things, Overall, this, this machine's incredible. Uh, the ability to have 16 inches cube in, you know, for your print size is just freaking awesome. I, it, it, when I ran my first print, I was just in awe because I, you know, I have the Prusa and it's so much smaller. Another feature that's really cool, and I'm not sure if this is because of the tiny machine firmware or not, when you begin to heat both the extruder and the print bed for a print, 
the extruder actually won't heat up until the print bed actually is finished heating. Uh, which is a really cool feature because if you haven't done research or anything on this so far, obviously because it's such a bigger bed, it's gonna take a lot longer to, to heat up. So I think to get it to 55 degrees, I've heated about four or five times. On average, it's taken about 12 minutes, which is a very long time. So, you know, that's that's a downside, but it's really not too big of a deal when you, you know, realize how much bigger of an area you can use to print something. Just keep in mind, if you're gonna to wanna to run a print, just come down, turn it on before, you know, work on some other stuff, get your G-code file ready. And then, you know, by the time you're done with that, you can go back, it's ready to print. A lot of times on printers, they, they heat up simultaneously. And uh, sometimes this can cause some leakage or something like that on your nozzle. If, it, if you still have filament fresh in there and it'll leak out, maybe that catches something on the first print, messes up your first layer, et cetera, et cetera. It's just, I like it better where it doesn't heat up until it's ready because it takes 30 you know, seconds to a minute for the extruder to heat up and then it's ready, it's good to go. You have barely any filament that came out. Another cool feature that came with the CR-10S4 was the filament sensor. So this is something, I, I think they send this with all S4s, at least from Tiny Machines, but basically there's a little attachment you put on and keeps track of the filament going and feeding through. Uh, and so if you're running a 72 hour print and your filament runs out, then basically it'll catch it and understand that as soon as it's done, and then it will pause the print and you can come back and put more filament in and continue your print. Really cool feature, and when you're running you know, crazy long prints on this big of a print bed, that's a feature you're gonna wanna have. Two things that I ran into that I didn't really like, um, I don't know if I just missed something, or maybe it wasn't properly labeled or, or something like that. One was, initially I didn't put the filament tensor on because I wanted to just run a quick test print and see if my calibration was ready, and the filament kept wanting to unload and it was saying, it basically was telling me there was no filament in there and I had loaded it in like 10 times. So I was kind of confused. Then I realized that I still had one more connection I could just put in for the filament sensor. So I plugged that in, put it on the side where it goes and fed the filament through and it worked like a charm. So that's one thing to keep in mind when you're doing your first print, it can kind of get frustrating because you inject filament and then it ejects it out and you keep doing that and you're like, what the heck? So keep that in mind. Um, another thing that I had an issue with was the axis, the Z axis coupler. Uh, on the side where the filament enters. Uh, so basically what was happening was I was getting ready to kind of just test all the movement of each of the axes on the printer. And what would happen is the one side would rotate freely. And so if this is my X axis, it would keep coming down and the other side on this side would stay locked. And eventually it just started to jam. And that's not good. Um, you don't want to burn out your motors or anything like that. So I started to troubleshoot it. I got some good ideas from some uh, Facebook posts I read in the group. If you're not in that, definitely join that group. You'll learn a lot. And I tried a bunch of different things. And what ended up happening was you just had to loosen these two screws and then both sides moved freely and it was awesome. Uh, so definitely check out that video if you want to see how I did that fix. It's a really easy fix, so definitely check that out if you guys are having those issues. Other than that, those are the only issues I had with the printer, and they're not long-term issues. They were just kind of short-term. You had to kind of fight through them to get good print quality. Now right into the first print. This is the first print. It's uh, I think it's around a 15-inch rocket, and this thing is incredible. Um, it has no infill, so it is a little... You can see it's a little squishy, but that's fine because it only took, I think, around seven or eight hours maybe. It's super cool. And uh, you can even see uh, the details on the blasters. I mean, this thing could, you know, this could be a SpaceX rocket. It's so sweet. Uh, probably not, but that's okay. Uh, but this is really, this was my first print. It turned out really well, no quality, no quality issues. I made sure everything was calibrated well. And uh, overall, it was really good. So if you guys want to be able to print, you know, pretty cool stuff like this, I could never do this on any other 3D printers I ever had. It's something you're definitely gonna to wanna to check out is the CR-10S4. So as always guys, thanks for tuning in and uh, if you have any questions, feel free to comment below and if this video helped you guys out and kinda of give you some insight on the Creati CR-10S4, definitely hit that subscribe button. I'm gonna have a lot more content coming soon and as always, thanks for tuning in guys and have a great day. Yeah.